Hi everyone, this is Edmund with a quick tutorial on how to create an ebook cover with Pin.net. If you have any questions, you can contact me at admin at imlicious.com. If you do not have Pin.net, you can actually go to this website URL, getpin.net slash download.html to download your copy of Pin.net. This is how it looks like when you open it for the first time. After you have downloaded Pin.net, the next thing I'll do is go to search.creativecommons.org to look for images that I can use for commercial purposes and images that allow me to modify, adapt, or build upon. So this is very important. I mean, you wouldn't want to use any image that you find on the internet because some of them may have copyright. So you don't want to infringe any of the copyright issues and get yourself into trouble with the law. I'll be using the strength training niche as an example to create an ebook cover for my ebook. So what I'll do is I'll type in the niche term here, strength training followed by wallpaper at the end of it. So after you're done, you can select one of these image options here, Google Images, FlickR, Photopedia, or Pixabay. I'm going to choose Google Images, so you can just click on it. So once you click on it, you'll be brought to this search results where you'll see that all these images are labeled for reuse with modification, so you can use them for commercial purposes. I've decided to go with this image, so what I'll do, I'll click on it, and then click View Image. The next thing I'll do is to copy the image and paste it into pin.net itself. So just right click on your mouse, click on copy image, then go to pin.net. But before you copy the image, I encourage you to change the canvas size to meet the A4 sizing. Go to image, select canvas size. Under the width, you want to type in 1240. And then under the height, you want to type in 1754. This is for the pixels of an A4 size. So once you're done, you can just click on OK. And then you'll see that this blank space has been resized to an A4 paper. Okay, pin.net does not allow you to right click. So what you can do is press Ctrl plus V on your keyboard to paste the image here. So here you want to select keep canvas size. This is how the image looks like. What you can do is you can just drag the image, just click on it and then drag it to fit the edges of the page itself. Then what I'll do is I'll just move the image down to fit at the bottom of it. After you're done, if you want to, you can click on this circle icon here, click and hold on to it, and then just drag the image up so that it can fit the entire blank space. So I'll just leave it to this section. Maybe I'll just drag a little bit more up to here to deselect this image. Just click on the gray area here. So you can see that there's some white space here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose this color picker, just click on it, and just click on this black space here. You auto automatically select the color of the background under this option here. This will ensure that when you use the paint bucket and just click on this white space, it'll be the same color as what is found here. I mean, you wouldn't want the top to be of a different color compared to the background here, right? So it just makes sense to do that. This is the image of my ebook cover. And the next thing I'll do is I'll just click on this text icon here and just click here. Let's open a notepad file, paste my title in it. Just select the entire sentence, right click, copy it, and just click here, press Ctrl plus V on the keyboard to paste the words there. You can see that you cannot see the word, so you gotta change the color. So in this case, I'm gonna select red. So you can just drag this circle in the middle, just click on it and then drag it to the right to change the color. If you want it to be yellow, you can do so as well. So you can see that the text has changed color. So in this case, I'm gonna select red. I'm gonna select the font family. In this case, I'm going to choose Rockwell and change the font size as well to put it at 144. So you can see that you'll not be able to see the entire sentence, right? So what you can do is you can just move the cursor, just move it here and then hit enter. So you can see that the sentence after the definitive has moved down and then go to after the two just hit enter again to move down the build mask and hit enter again to move down the and sustain it the really good thing about this text selection is that it allows you to move the text around you can see that I can move the text around by just clicking on it and then holding on to it and just move it with a mouse what I'll do is I'll enter mass enter the sustain it and enter the eat down and if you want to change the alignment of your text you can do so here there's center align and align right you can align right if you want to you can see that the entire words fit nicely now personally i prefer to select center align so that it looks neater actually go to the front of the word and then just hit on the space bar to move the words so it's actually very easy to use okay you don't need to have a lot of um, it knowledge to do this if you want to do any some of the advanced features you can actually check out youtube.com and just type in pin.net tutorials there are a lot of very good tutorials on YouTube that will teach you on how to do the advanced features. But in this case, I'm just going to cover some of the basic features so you get a general idea on how to use this software. After I've added the title, the next thing I'll do is I'll just click on this rectangular select to deselect this title. And I'll click on text again and just click here. What I'll do here is I'll enter my name in it, which is Edmund Yo. 
So we can reduce the font size because it's much bigger this time around. We can select maybe 108. I think 108 would be perfectly fine. Or I can put it at 96 so that it fits in right. So if you want to change the font color, you can do so as well. You can put it to blue so that there's some contrast there. And if you want to bow it, you can do so as well. You can just bow it and unbow it. If you want to add an underline to it, you can do so. If you want to italic it, you can do so as well. So in this case, I'll just leave it as it is. After you're done with this image, what you can do is just go to File, select Save As, and then go to Desktop desktop or wherever you want it to be and just save it as ebook cover and just click on saved and click on ok so by doing this you have actually saved your file and if I go to my desktop and look for the file ebook cover and just click on it you'll see that this is how the ebook cover looks like very simple isn't it so with that I've come to the end of this tutorial on how to create your own ebook cover if you have any questions feel free to email me at admin at and I'll be glad to help you out thank you for listening and goodbye see ya